If we look more closely at the Garden of Eden story, beyond the frames that it's presented, it is likely an eschological tale weaponizing the tree of life in the garden, a cutting off of not only knowledge and wisdom of Asherah, but eternity itself. Authors of the Bible were intentionally acrimonious in their portrayal of the tree of life. From the book When God Was a Woman, it would not be too surprising if the symbolism of the tree of forbidden fruit, said to offer knowledge of good and evil, was included in the creation story to warn that eating the fruit of this tree had caused the downfall of all humanity. Partaking in a tree that was once revered as knowledge and a life force we have now been cut off from. In Jeremiah 7:18, the worship of Asherah was a familial affair in the home. Wood was gathered for the fire to bake the cakes with fruit to Asherah, they would drink wine, sing songs, make weavings of veils in the temples, and dance to celebrate. Queen Makkah also had a tree or pole of worship to Asherah, but she was deposed for it. In the ancient world, religion was intrinsically tied to survival. When you can't read, iconography becomes very important to the illiterate. Imagery was a great comfort to people. Revealing her Chthonic side in the desert, Moses placed Asherah on a pole as a snake representing healing and regeneration. This pole was taken to the tabernacle and eventually moved to the first temple. Asher as the tree of life even inspired the menorah. Pruned trees, possibly almond, represented the goddess. Abraham planted a tamarisk tree after being blessed by Melchizedek, the king of Salem. Joshua mentions the oak tree near the holy place. Amongst the beautiful images that have been uncovered of the goddess, many appeal to her epithets. She who walks on water, holiness, creatrix of vegetation, queen of heaven, lady of the lions, tree of life, and so on. In Proverbs 1 through 8, wisdom hearkens the people to heed her words. Wisdom is a tree of life in this prophecy, and not listening to her will reap rotten fruit. Now when you read Genesis, try to take the information you have learned about Asherah and see what other ideas it invokes. 